that is certainly a huge reverb. Uh, all right, welcome back to DIY DSP. And today I have a super special treat for you. This is for everybody who loves to design and program their own sounds using digital signal processing. Uh, people who want to learn how to make and customize their own guitar and synthesizer effects with digital signal processing and everything. And also for fans of the FV1 or perhaps the Axolotti or the Axo, any kind of these um, do-it-yourself digital signal processing boards. Today, I have just received in the mail from experimentalnoise.com my dev kit, my dev board for the FX Core Audio Effects DSP. So let's make ourselves some fancy Chinese coffee and check this thing out. Okay, so here we are back at my lab bench. What I'm going to do is crack this thing open and talk to you a little bit about it as I do it. So first of all, if you are a fan of the FV1, if you ever made any effects or guitar pedals with that, then you are definitely going to want to upgrade to this. This board can be seen as, as a direct upgrade to the FV1, down to the way you program it, um, the programs... Um, so some of the features that it has, etc. It's, it's very similar. Um, I don't know exactly if it's the same exact people or what, um, but it's, it's certainly the same. The only thing is there's more of everything. So for example, the FV1 dev board had support for three potentiometers. This one has either five or six. Um, the old FV1 was a 16-bit CPU. This is a 32-bit CPU. Um, the FV1 had some knob smoothing. This has adjustable knob smoothing. Uh, uh, there's all kinds of other little upgrades in there. Um, one of the big ones is that a, a big thing that people wanted to do on the FV1 platform was use tap tempo, like to make delay pedals and, uh, you know, phasers and things like this. And there are ways to do that with a timer register, but now there's specific instructions, hardware support for tap tempo. So all of that goodness. Now let's see what we've got here. First of all, let's look at the, at each of these components I ordered. This here is going to be the dev board itself. Now, as far as ordering these dev boards, um, I tried to order one directly off a website in England called Profusion, but they are not allowed to sell it to the United States. That's where I am. So in the United States, you want to go directly to this company here, EN. Um, and, and if you're a fan of Einstutz and de Neubauten, yes, same initials. But this stands for uh, experimental noise with a Z and you just write to sales at experimental noise.com and they'll sell you one of these. Um, I honestly forget the price at the moment. Let me check the invoice. See if it's on there. No, it's not on there. I, I can't even remember how much it costs. I'm sorry about that, but easy to have to find out. So let's see what we get. Um, yeah. So in this one, we have five pots and now this seems to have in zero, in one, out zero, out one, in two, in three, out two, and out three. So we've got what looks like two pairs of ins and two pairs of outs. I don't know that the CPU actually supports all that, or if that's just something you switch on the board, I don't know. Um, one thing I do not like is that it uses these RCA jacks. Those are kind of outdated. Everyone's using quarter inch or um, headphone jacks these days. So whatever, it just means a bunch of adapters are in our future. Uh, this is another thing about this board that I love is it comes with, I mean, with the, with this chip is it comes with a bunch of these um, switches. So um, the other thing about this uh, upgrade, the FX Core over the FV1 is it does not um, have a built-in sound anymore. Now it's using an external codec. So that should increase the sound quality just a little bit more. Um, yeah, what else can we say? So we've got, there's the button for the tap tempo on here. Uh, let's see. I don't know what this is, but there's a disable enable button there. And then we've got like a little program select knob. 
Oh yeah, an interesting thing about this chip is that it actually stores all the programs on board. Um, I think you needed the external little chips, uh, those little eight pin chips were uh, ubiquitous with the FV1. So this is definitely an upgrade in that improvement there. So this is just, just uh, wonderful in every aspect. All right. So let's take a look at the other things that came with it. This is something that they suggested for me to buy. This is the ICP or the in-circuit programming board. Apparently, what this lets you do is design a pedal or an effect unit and then you can um, you could still modify it while it's in the circuit with this board so it looks like it takes like a USB micro input and then these three pins must go onto uh, whatever board you design so it looks like you can either ship your boards uh, you know, never programmable, or you can make them have a header for this. So that's the in-circuit board. Definitely, if you're going to be developing pedals, I would get this along with it. Let's see what else we got. All right, yeah, and so my dream is to actually make some kind of effect processor or a pedal for this chip. So I ordered a couple of the bare chips. So if anybody's interested in collaborating with me on that, let me know. I want to make like a circuit in... Um, keycad so here is the chip itself look at that beautiful i believe that's a 64 pin and although it's like a surface mount i have definitely been able to successfully uh solder those things it's not too bad you will definitely need um a, a magnifier of some kind and you will need flux paste and a good soldering iron and or heat gun in order to do it you know you won't be able to do that with that you know clunky old thing that you found in the basement you need some some decent equipment but it's definitely possible i've done a bunch of them uh soldering some 32-bit stm f4 chips okay so that's what it comes with so you're probably going to need your own power supply uh, it looks like yeah it's a nine volt supply so you know this is really just supposed to be like an unboxing but i feel like i at least got it gotta hook it up once and uh see what it sounds like don't you agree yeah let's let's just hook it up real quick and see what we can get well then i've got the necessary cables um for the nine volts i just used the power supply from my rc505 i found a bunch of adapters that's just a little bit janky but it's able to make it work to get the output to my little amplifier and for the audio source, I'm using this nice little portable JP08, one of my favorite little synthesizers. I mean, it's basically a Jupiter 8 in a tiny little case. And yeah, it happens to be digital, but don't tell anyone. So um, I've set the program select knob to program zero. So this first program that it comes shipped with is a small reverb. Let's listen. <laughs> Is certainly a huge reverb uh, despite being called small reverb another thing I noticed is there's a blue LED on the board that says overflow so when I turn it up uh, then it's obviously um, capable of telling you when it overflows which is very handy because you know you don't want to overdrive too much in your algorithms there also seems to be a light called user 1 and user 0 so I'll bet those are used for when you're developing your algorithms. Um, you can kind of debug, or maybe you can print out the tap tempo, not print out, but echo to the player, the tap tempo. I don't know, a bunch of possibilities here. Uh, so let's, gosh, if that's the small reverb, let's dial in the medium reverb. Heck, let's skip medium reverb and go right to cathedral reverb. Okay, yeah, so that's not necessarily bigger, but it's got some kind of a gate or an envelope on it. Let's go on to plate reverb. Now, one other thing that I want you to know is that I'm really needing this mini flathead screwdriver to turn the program select. I tried with my fingers. I guess it's possible. It's just going to hurt if you mess around with it too much, but just so you know. All right, let's see what their delay algorithm's like. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yes, we all know we could get lost in that for a couple days. Let's try some knobs with their reverb. Another nifty thing about this board is that it has much more RAM than, um, say, the FV1. So um, if you ever felt like your delays were too short, um, I'm not sure if this patch necessarily gives you the longest possible delay, but hey, that's respectable. Right? It's a, maybe a second or so. Uh, let's go on to some more effects. If that's delay, this might be chorus. Okay, so that's oscillating really fast. Oh yeah, that sounds kind of like a Commodore 64 chorus algorithm. Oh yeah, I like that. Alright, let's see what the other algorithms here are. There's a, there's a flanger. And you know what? I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to just do this all and leave no mystery for you. So I'm going to skip through some of these. I'm going to check out Ottawa though, because I'm curious about that. A little loose wire there somewhere in all these adapters. Ooh, that's got some thunderous reverb on there. Which leads me, of course, to the real point of this board is you're not supposed to just, you know, buy it and use all the default algorithms. This is for really creative, productive people who want to make their own effects and then put them onto these chips and put them inside guitar pedals or rack effects for other people to use. Um, you know, like you want to start your own boutique guitar pedal company, you want to make your algorithm. And so to do that, you're going to have to get down into the code. So this is just the unboxing with a little mini demo. We're not going to get into that. But um, I have started to look into the uh, the programming for this. It's very similar to the FV1. And I've also created a subreddit for this board. And I've created a Discord as well. And also a Facebook group. Uh, so I'm going to leave the URLs for those down in the description. There's also a, um, there's another forum that they created also. So, you know, this is, I, I think this chip was kind of delayed by the virus, the pandemic, but I think now it's going to be, um, it, it's time. So let's get out there and let's uh, make some cool effects for this thing. Let's start sharing some source code. I'm hoping to post some tutorials here on my channel. Uh, one of the first things I want to do is walk through the distortion algorithm and maybe make some modest improvements to it, add some more components and partials to it. Uh, so yeah, keep it locked right here. DIY DSP.